Acts chapter 9. And Saul, yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter, it's become his it's become his air, it's become his breathing, it's become his oxygen, it's become his carbon oxide, it's threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord. Disciple is one that's disciplined, one that obeys the Lord. He's not going after couch potato uh, people. Those were, you know, oh yeah, we're just saved, that's it. He don't care about them. He's caring about those who are doing what Jesus wants them to do. Notice the word disciple. Not just the apostles. He's going after those who are living for God. Went unto the high priest. And desired of him letters to Damascus to the synagogues. That if he found any of this way, the way of Jesus Christ. They're not called Christians yet. They're not called the church. And always of this way, Jesus said in John 14, verse 6, I am the way. That's an interesting choice words, Paul. Whether they were men or women, he didn't care. He might bring them bound unto Jerusalem to bring them before the council. We've already had a council in, in Acts chapter 2 and Acts chapter 3. Acts chapter 4 and Acts chapter 5. And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus. So he's on the road to Damascus, on his way to Damascus. <coughs> and suddenly there shined round about him a light from heaven. <coughs> Remember, Paul's a Jew. He's a sincere Jew. He is obeying the law. So as a Jew, he will and can be inquired by a sign or miracle of God, being a Jew. Here it is. Other places when he tells it, which we'll get into Acts later on, Lord willing, he says that this light was above the noonday light. And he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him, Saw, saw, verily, verily. That's Jesus speaking. Why persecutest thou? Uh oh. This voice tells Saw, you're persecuting me. No, he's pers persecuting disciples. Read on. And he said, Who art thou, Lord? The Lord said, I am Jesus. Now, it's an interesting fact that we read in Acts chapter 9 is when Christians are persecuted, Fox, the Book of Martyrs, the Book of Acts, you're doing it to Jesus Christ according to Jesus Christ himself. When you get up and badmouth someone who brings you the gospel, however they do it, you're not doing it to that disciple. You're doing it to Jesus Christ. So rest assured, whatever ministry you have that's Bible correct, and when you get sass and you get persecuted, you it's not you. Jesus said, marvel not the world hates you. Know that it hated me first. They hate Jesus. They don't hate the people. They hate Jesus. I am Jesus whom thou persecutest. And he said, Who art thou, Lord? Here it is, religious zealot. Of all the power of religion does not know who Jesus Christ is. Religion and the law can't save you no more. Notice that in Acts chapter 9. Paul is under the law. He's obeying the law. He's a religious zealot. And it can't save him. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. Paul has got a conscience problem. He's not only doing this, this threatening and this slaughter. and There's something eating at his heart. 
in the back of Paul's heart somewhere, he's angry against God. The Holy Spirit is working on him, and he does not like it. For Jesus to say something like this. And he trembling and astonished said, Lord, what will thou have me to do? Submission. The Lord said unto him, Rise and go into the city, and it shall be told thee what thou must do. The men which journeyed from him stood speechless, hearing a voice, but seeing no man. So this was for Saul only. Saul rose from the earth. When he opened his eye, when he when his eyes were open, he saw no man. But they led him by the hand and brought him into the mass. He's blinded. He was three days without sight, and neither did eat nor drink. We'll learn in a minute what he's doing. There was a certain disciple at Damascus. Well, this is where Paul's going to get. Named Ananias. To whom, he, to whom said the Lord in a vision, Ananias? He said, Behold, I am here, Lord. The Lord said unto him, Rise and go into the street which is called Straight. They name streets just like they name streets in America. Straight. Inquire in the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tarsus. For behold, he prayeth. Verse 9. That boy is fasting. That boy is praying to God. And I answered, Lord, well, and has seen a vision, a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hand on him that he might receive his sight. Paul's getting visions of God. Ananias, you're going to come lay hands on him. And I said, Lord, I have heard many things, many of this, I have heard by many of this man how much evil he has done to the saints at Jerusalem. Paul has made himself a name throughout the world. In the little time of chapter 7, 8, and 9, Paul has made himself, if you are a disciple or, or a, an apostle of Jesus Christ, beware. Saul is worse than President Obama because he's actually doing threatenings. He's actually doing slaughter. He's actually putting Christians in jail. And when a disciple is spoken by God to go see this man, that disciple, oh Lord, excuse me, I'm having a Peter moment here, but you want me to go see that guy? Here's a disciple of God, and he's telling God, really? Come on, God, you don't know what this guy's doing, don't you? You really don't know, do you? And here he has authority from the chief priests. Those are the ones that crucified Jesus Christ. To bind, put in handcuffs, tie, rope. All that call on thy name. 540. When they release them out of that council. Before they beat them. They proclaim, don't you preach that name. And beat them and sent them out. That message wasn't only to, to Peter and John. That message is to everybody. How powerful is the name of Jesus Christ that here these people are killing in the name of Jesus Christ?
But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me. Now, he just met Ananias just blinking like, uh, this man's killing Christians, but he's a to hear my name, to bear my name before the Gentiles, uh oh, and kings and the children of Israel. Ananias gets a revelation about this man. This man is going to the Gentiles. Do you hear the door creaking for the nation of Israel, creaking closing? This man that has a pure and he does a love for Israel, his people, is being called to go to the Gentiles. And kings. And we'll see that in the book of Acts. And the children of Israel. God's not done with them. But that door is creaking. For I will show him how great things he must suffer be that to see paul god is not mocked whatsoever a man soweth that you're going to reap everything that happened in paul's life part of it happened because what he's doing in chapter 9 chapter 8 and chapter 7. if paul had to suffer for what he'd done in the things of his life before he even knew jesus christ What makes you think you can get off? Paul is the pretty much foundation outside above Jesus Christ of the Gentiles of getting in and knowing the church, what the church is supposed to do. Oh yeah, he's going to be forgiven. His sins will be under the blood. But he's got some payment to do. And if you think salvation is going to eliminate all your troubled problems and, and uh, fights and, and abuse, and then Paul will have to stand before God while God apologizes to him. And God's not going to do that. Because Paul also wrote, All they that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Do you realize what, what Paul just said? There were people who were living disciples of the Lord I was persecuting them I didn't just write that verse I lived that verse I gave them persecution so you would think when Paul writes something like that he would single out the loser he would make sure that you are a disciple if you were truly a disciple, you got it from him. How he must suffer for my name's sake, Galatians 6, 6 and 7. He's not going to suffer for being Saul. He's going to suffer for the name of Jesus Christ. And he will. And Ananias went his way and entered into the house. And put his hands on him and said, now this is the controversy here. Brother Saul. We know that Ananias is a disciple of the Lord. He walks up to. You think Ananias will walk to an unsaved man and say brother. If Paul's not saved. Now I know some clown. That's traveling around and would preach that you know this this means that they're they're Israelite brothers. Find me one place in the Bible, and the Catholics use that for to say James and uh, and Joneses. Well, you know they were Jews with Jesus, not brothers. Brother Saul, the Lord, even Jesus, that appeared unto thee in the way as thou camest. Now Paul's got to be wondering, now here comes Ananias, this guy knows exactly what happened, so he's got to be the one, this is a sign. He's telling Paul exactly what happened that afternoon. As thou camest, has sent me, 
that thou mayest receive thy sight and be filled with the Holy Ghost. Paul's now saved. Brother, here's a now the Holy Ghost. He's saved. Did he get saved before verse 17 said? He got saved in 17. The Holy Ghost has come upon him. And immediately there fell from his eyes as it had been scaled. And he received sight forthwith and rose and was baptized. Oh, there we go. And when he was received meat, he was strengthened. Then Saul certain days with the disciples which were at Damascus. And straightway he preached Christ in the synagogue. With the heart man believes unto righteousness. With the mouth Paul is now preaching. He's heard the word of Jesus into his ears. He receives the Holy Ghost. He gets baptized. Now his mouth is speaking. He's saved. There's that formula we've been following along. The word repentance and then open your mouth and straightway he preached Christ in the synagogue wait a minute let's see verse 2 and desire of him letters to Damascus to the synagogues that if he found any of this way oh <laughs> Paul has completely repented and changed his life Instead of seeking Christians, he's seeking lost people. He's doing what he he's doing what he arrested people for doing. That he is the Son of God. Ooh. Big change in Paul's message. But all that heard him were amazed and said, Is not this he that destroyed them? Which called on the name, which called on this name in Jerusalem? Isn't this the guy? Wasn't he a disciple killer? Wasn't he one that rested the disciples? Didn't he have havoc? Can't be him. He's up there preaching that Christ he was against. And hither and came hither for the intent that he might bring them bound unto the chief priest. They knew why he was coming to Damascus. To arrest people in the synagogue and bring them back to Jer uh, the Jeremiah. Bring them back to, to Jerusalem. They're saying that's the guy that came to arrest us, but now he's preaching. Paul or Saul is a new creature. That's another thing you need for salvation. A complete change in your life. And he made people astonished at what he's doing. What on earth? Who is... And for a while they were going to see what they think is a trick. But Saul increased the more in strength. And confounded the Jews which dwelt at Damascus. Proving that this is very Christ. Paul is so with the Old Testament. He's convincing them with the Old Testament. That's Jesus Christ. Now he's winning fruit. And after that, many days were fulfilled. The Jews took counsel to kill him. Oh, his buddies, his friends. Now he's become public enemy number one. But their laying await was known to Saul. And they watched the gates day and day and night to kill him. He's in a city. They got their eyes on the gate like some, uh, um, Samson. And the disciples took him by night and let him down by the wall in a basket. Away from the gate somewhere they lower him down off the wall. Huh? Rick Rahab. Rick Rahab. And that's what it's going to say with that. Watch the walls in the Bible. They're interesting stories. So the disciples are helping Paul. Saul. Not yet Paul. They're helping Paul get away from the Jews or his enemies now.
So there's a bond there now. And when Saul was come to Jerusalem, ooh, man, he marched right into the battlefield. He is saved to join himself to the disciples. I'm going to go join them. But they were all afraid of him. I would be too. And believed not that he was a disciple. Well, he comes marching in Jerusalem. Hurrah, hurrah. I want to join you guys. Yeah, right, Paul. Sure. I know what you want to do. You want to arrest us. And they have perfectly good right to think what they're th the news of Damascus has not reached Damascus, uh, Jerusalem yet. Paul beat the news bearers. It's the only way you can think about it. But Barabbas, ooh, you're going to see him. Barnabas. Barnabas, but Barnabas took him, Paul, and brought him to the apostles. Went over to the disciples and brought him to the twelve. Saul has left the Sanhedrin and has now joined in with the apostles. What a change. And declared unto them how he had seen the Lord in the way. You got to wonder, how, how does Barnabas know this? Barnabas just shows up. Boom, here he is. And he's defending Saul. He knows the story of Saul. And so much that the apostles believe him. It's like Elijah. Elijah just shows up, boom. And causing Ahab troubles ever since. And that he had spoken to him. Jesus had spoken to him. And how he had preached boldly at Damascus in the name of Jesus. So he met Jesus. He heard the word of Jesus. He got saved and he's preaching. He is living what the word of God says. Okay, we believe him now. And he was with them coming in and going out of Jerusalem. I don't know how... What kind of house was he got? But and he spanked boldly in the name of the Lord Jesus. Oh, he's causing his own trouble. He's in the synagogues. He's in the temple. He's all over teaching Jesus Christ. He does not need to be an enemy to the Sanhedrin by by hearsay. He's being an enemy to the Sanhedrin by his own mouth preaching Jesus. Which in Acts chapter 5, they already told those apostles, don't you do it. And beating them. And disputed against the Grecians. But they went about to slay. Man, this guy is disputing. They come up, well, Jesus is not the one. Oh, yes, he is. And then starting with the Bible. Which when they which when the brethren knew brethren they brought him down to Caesarea and sent him forth to Tarsus. They got him out of town. They're hot after Saul. Then had the churches rest throughout all Judea and Galilee and Samaria. And were edified and walking in the fear of the Lord, not Saul no more. They got the Jews still giving them problems. You got the chief priests still giving them problems. But they're fearing the Lord now. Why? What is the greatest sign that the apostles and the disciples have now seen? Here this, I don't want to say Christian. Here is this disciple killer, this disciple prisoner, this guy who's against disciples of the Lord has now turned, he's now preaching, and he's turning people to Jesus Christ. 
That's a praise and glory to the people that's serving the Lord. We don't have to fear Saul no more. And Saul is probably also told him, watch out for that guy over there. Remember all Paul writes about the deceiver? That guy is really part of the council. He's acting like a Christian. Watch out for that guy over there. Paul is probably telling them names. Say, hey, this person you need to watch. Don't you trust that person. When you read Paul's writing, he was not afraid to speak against those that were deceivers. And were multiplied, growing. The church is growing during persecution, and the church is growing during the fear of God. There's no fear of God, and there's no persecution in America today. I don't care how high your gas goes. That's not persecution. And the church is ready to defend against persecution by their own means and not by the means of God. It came to pass as Peter. Oh, now we go back to Peter. Peter comes back in the spotlight. And in Paul's life, this is where Paul, oh, I forget where he says he goes. I think it's Galatia. He tells him he, he went into somewhere. And he goes off and he learns some things. He has a little quality time with the Lord. It's one of, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, or uh, it's one of them books there. He tells about this this little space of time he had alone after meeting the apostles, after meeting Peter. He went off somewhere. I forget where it is. And he just had a little time. And it came to pass as Peter passed through all quarters. Peter's going everywhere. The high end, the low end. He came down also to the saints which dwelt in Lydia. There was a certain man named Aeneas, which had kept his bed eight years, and was sick of the pulse. And Peter said unto him, Aeneas, Jesus Christ make thee whole. Arise, make thy bed. And he arose to meal. I don't want to see a faith healer do that in the hospital room. I want to see him walk in room 205, walk in there and say, what's the name on the play card? In the name of Jesus Christ, rise out of that bed and be completely healed of anything and everything you got. Aeneas didn't seek Peter. Peter came to Aeneas. Peter did not collect money. Peter did not put a tent up. And he arose immediately. This guy was completely healed. What do you think Aeneas was? Yeah, that's kind of a weird name there. It could be like the Greek or but there's two signs for the Jews, so there has to be something with Jews. And all that dwelt in Lydia and Saron saw him and turned to the Lord. Now there was at Joppa a certain disciple named Tabitha. Oh, a woman could be a disciple. One that has disciple, one that has directed her life, one that has given her life to serve the Lord, which by interpretation is called Dorcas. That's a gazelle. This woman was full of good works. And alms deeds, which she did. This woman, she's well known. She's a proper woman. She would be a woman that any Christian person that had a son would want to honor this woman. If his son was an honorable Christian. Don't you marry this woman with a with a, your son who doesn't do nothing for a living. Scumbag. This woman is full of the Lord. And it came to pass in those days that she was sick and died. And when they had washed, they laid her in the upper chamber. And this was this is customary about these areas. They would put the body in the same room. What you do in a funeral home today. So what you do at the cemetery is the same thing. It's a wait. They just did it in their living room. 
They did it in upper chamber, somewhere in the house. And for as much as Lydia was nigh to Joppa, and the disciples had heard that the disciples, whole gather of them, heard that Peter was there, they sent unto him two men, desiring him that he would not delay to come to them. Then Peter arose and went with them. When he was come, they brought him into the upper chamber. Notice how willingly Peter goes. In the next chapter, Peter is not going to be so willing to go. Matter of fact, he's going to have a little argument with the Lord again. Remember that from 9 and 10. Peter rose and went with them. When he was come, they brought him to the upper chamber, and all the widows stood by him weeping, and showing the, court, the coats and the garments which Dorcas made while she was with them. So this is just like a wake. You see that blanket she made? You see that those earrings that she always wore? And just... But Peter put them all forth and kneeled down. Oh, they didn't bring Peter to, to re resurrect her. They brought Peter because Peter probably knew. They knew who Peter was. The disciples probably had, had a custom to meet Peter and be with Peter. So they figured, hey, Peter's in the next town. We know Peter. Invite him. And Peter put forth and knelt down and prayed and turning him to the body said, Tabitha, arise. And she opened her eyes, and when she saw Peter, she sat up. He gave her his hand, as you would find in Beauty and the Beast, and those other romantic uh, uh, children's stories. You know, she rides, she gets up from the dead, and the Prince Charming's there. And he gave her his hand and lifted her up when he had called the saints. Oh, living people. Saints in the Bible are people who are living. And widows. Uh oh. Saints and widows. Some people there are not saved. Saints and widows presented her alive. Here she is. And it was known throughout all Joppa. And many believed in the Lord. Now there's another sign for the Jews. And it came to pass that he tarried many days in Joppa with one Simon. That's an interesting name keeps showing up in the Bible. A tanner. So Peter is in Joppa now. He's out of Jerusalem. He's traveling around. And he's preaching the gospel and he's doing signs and wonders. Paul has gotten saved. He's off on a little trip right now, getting to meet, know the Lord and everything. But well, he's going to be starting in. 